All right, here I'm, uh, I'm Lenny Pike with uh, the J&W Moving Company out of uh, Dayton, Ohio. I'm a mover by trade, and I am uh, tonight filling in for uh, the regular host. I'm new at this podcast business, but uh, I'm supposed to talk to this gentleman here, uh, Roberto Smith. No, Robert. Robert there Smith. Go. There you go. Robert Smith, welcome to town. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what brings you here. Well, I appreciate it, uh, Lenny. This is my first time here in Tonyville. It's uh, yep. it's a beautiful town. Uh, you know, I I came uh, to Tonyville because I I work in the fair industry, so I'm at the Tonyville Fair this week. Did you see the water tower? Uh, yep. Got, every, every town's got one. Got every, that big T on it. Yep. Some people think it stands for Texas or Tennessee or Ice T. Yeah, I was going to say, is it a whole giant water cooler of sweet tea? Is that what it is? Yeah, we're in the south. Who knows? I, You know, I mean, it's a public uh, <laughs> municipal uh, municipality, as they say, and it's uh, that's what it is. So uh, what, what, do you, what do you do for a living there, Roberto? Well, I, uh, I'm an entertainer. Um, I am the head of my own company, Robert Smith Presents. I make it sound really fancy, but it's just a glorified way of saying I'm self-employed. And, um, so you employ yourself is I what did. you're saying. I did. So I, I suppose, Are you a good boss to yourself, Roberto? I, I am. And I suppose if I ever got out of line, I could just fire myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some days I'd like to. But I work in primarily in the fair industry. I perform an attraction called Conjurer Fortune Machine, where I travel all across the country to towns just like Tonyville. And, uh, and I set up a fortune box and I get in it and I pretend that I'm the, the mechanical fortune teller on the inside. Wait a minute now, you're in a box? Yes. How Th big is this box? Think of it like uh, the size of like a big Coke vending machine. Like if you've ever seen a Zoltar fortune machine, like in the movie Big... I don't know if they ever showed that movie where you were. Yeah, playing. I've seen that movie. I yeah, ain't stupid. so the little kid, <laughs> the little kid, can't get on the roller coaster. He's not big enough, and so he finds this Zoltar fortune machine, and he puts in, drops in a quarter, and makes a wish to be, uh, to be big, so that he can get on this ride. And sure enough, he uh, wakes up the next day as Tom Hanks, and you know all the hilarity ensues in the movie. But we took the. Do you know Tom Hanks? I no. No, if I if Do you I, know the little boy who played Tom Hanks? No. Don't know. Don't know him either. But wonder if the little boy who played Tom Hanks knows Tom Hanks. I'm guessing there's a pretty good chance that that, that happened on the movie. One day that little boy will be as old as Tom Hanks was when he played Tom Hanks in that movie. I think that already happened cuz okay. that movie was like 1988. Oh, okay. And it's now 30 years later, so that kid was probably about 13 in that movie, so... You're good at math. The kid's probably older than I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I get in the box. People at fairs come up. They press a button, and it activates me, so I do, like, a mechanical man kind of deal, and I say, uh, give them a funny fortune, and then I give them a fortune card. So you're like a cyborg, uh, Kreskin. You're a mechanical yes. man. I'm like a mechanical fortune-telling magician guy in the box. Now, as a professional mover, I have to ask you, how much does this box weigh? Uh, the box, uh, with the audio and everything loaded in it, weighs approximately 70 pounds. Audio? Well, you got a boom box in there? Yep. I got the old one, like you used to. They used to carry up on their shoulder. You know, the guys used to do like. Oh the, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you play some of that newfangled hippity hop in there. Yeah, hip all the way hip hop. Yeah. We, we but you know, like people come some up. Some Wu Tang want, Clan. No, we go more Snoop and even like Saba. Saba's one of my new favorite artists out there. What about Beastie Boys? You go old school with Beastie Boys. Um, if I ever have to fight for my right to party, I will go. Old <laughs> <laughs> so 70 some pounds and if i was to move this thing for you not saying i will but if you're going to hire me to move it what's the uh, dimensions of this here box uh the box is approximately three feet by three feet and it's about seven feet tall so, so you like shrink yourself down in there to get inside of it? With yes. shrink and ray? Yep, I do. I, there's a special drink that I drink, and it shrinks me. I and, bet it is. And 
I know what kind of drinks you like to drink. Well, it is the South. <laughs> we might have some moonshine in there. A little there. sweet tea with a little, a little sweet tea Long with Island in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a little sippy sip. Oh, my God. So, Lenny, you're filling in for the host. Who? Tell me about the regular host who's supposed to be here. I don't really know because I don't listen to this station. But my brother-in-law, he works for him, and he called me up, and he said, Hey, I need somebody to fill in, and I wasn't moving nobody today. So I said, You know. So he got nothing to do. He gave you a microphone and said, hey, go do this podcast. Yep. Did you even know what a podcast was? I have no idea what it is. I thought it was something to do with plants. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe pod people from that movie where the aliens came and they turn, they, 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 they do something and then they turn into human form and they come out of a pod. You know what I'm saying? A pod. Not a Tide pod. Like the kids are eating today, but you know, one that, of the, like yeah. a plant thing. I have a theory on that. I have a theory. Here's the theory on that one, Lenny. What's that? I don't believe that the whole so-called Tide Pod challenge was ever real. Because the media made a big stink about, oh, it's a viral thing and it's going everywhere on the internet. Well, I do social media all the time. And so I go start looking on the internet on Instagram and YouTube. And, whatnot, and literally I found like two videos of somebody being stupid and doing it. Two. And everybody else was making, you know, cracking jokes about it. So my theory yeah. on it was this wasn't a viral thing that they were actually eating Tide Pods. Oh. I I suspect, who is it, Procter & Gamble, whoever it is that owns Tide, may be behind it. That they may have put that out there and got people talking about Tide nonstop. Because you then notice, mm. come Super Bowl time, mm. every ad was a Tide ad. Oh, wow. Oh. There's my conspiracy theory on that. I'm going to interrupt you right now. i got to eat a Tide Pod. Hang on. That's funny. Usually they're gagging and... <laughs> yep, there you go. Oh, so dude, anyway... You, you ate the blue one. Oh, the blue one. You live in a box. No, I perform in a box. Oh, you, you perform in a box, but yeah. you don't live in a box. But where do you live? Uh, I'm, I'm based out of um, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, New it's Mexico. It's a long way. It's like a three days drive from Tonyville. Do you ever run into uh, the Breaking Bad people? Uh, from time to time, yes. Their streets close down when they've got, especially Better Call Saul when they're filming. Mm -hmm. uh, or I guess they record anymore. I'm not sure if they use, anybody uses film anymore. Uh, but yes, I know where all the locations were for Breaking Bad. And that poor lady who owns the Walter White House, if any of your followers that are out there listening to this podcast... Uh, are Breaking Bad fans. That poor lady who owns the house that they use for Walter White's house has had to put up like a six foot tall wrought iron fence around the house because people kept throwing pizzas up on the garage roof. Pizzas? Yeah, there's a scene in one of the episodes where he, where Walter White gets pissed off and he, he throws a pizza up. Yeah, I know that scene, but does and, she not like pizza? Well, I don't think she likes it on her roof. The Here's the, here's the backstory on that that I understand. They had whoever, I forget the pizza guys that brought it. I... I'm blanking the name, but the guys that did the pizza, they apparently brought like 25 pizzas to the set that day. Nice. Because they thought they were going to have to, he was going to launch, and it would miss, and it would fall down, and they'd have oh. to reshoot. He nailed, what you saw, apparently, Brian Cranston nailed that on the first take. I wonder what a pizza would taste like if it had Tide Pods on it. Oh, Jesus, Lenny. Pizza and Tide Pods. Don't, yeah. eat, don't eat Tide Pods. So you live in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, but you you live in a box? No, you don't really perform in I a box. I perform in the box. You live in I'm the guy in the box. You're in the box, and uh, you do this conjurer, order, conjurer. Maybe I should launch a podcast, and yeah. I should, instead of just me interviewing people, maybe conjurer should be the one to interview people. That maybe, would be interesting. Yeah, be good. You could do it in a box, <laughs> like a pizza box. Well, okay. So you live in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and you do these fairs and all and that stuff. And then uh, you got a family or something up there? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm I'm married. I my wife is Sarah. We've been married for almost 13 years. Oh, and bless her heart. Th thank you, Lenny. That was good. Uh, we have one son. His name is Nathan, and he's seven years old. He loves to play with Legos. I should rephrase that. He loves when we buy him the expensive Legos so he can build them, and then he doesn't touch them again. They just sit there. Oh, there you go. You got kids, Lenny? No, me and my wife hadn't kids. I, I'm on the road all the time, you know, moving. And uh, 
but she has, well, I got a stepdaughter. I don't see her much, you know, she's my stepdaughter. She, uh, when I married my wife, my wife was a widow and she had a grown daughter and she became a stepdaughter. And after I married my wife, my stepdaughter went and married my daddy who was divorced. So now she's my stepmama and my daddy is my son-in-law. Does that make you your own grandpa? Well, they had a baby boy. <laughs> so, yeah, technically, that baby boy is my grandson and my half-brother. So my wife is the mother of her own mother, which means I married my grandma. You said you're from Dayton, Ohio? Dayton, Ohio. This story, Lenny, sounds like you should be from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Nope, but I've been there. You've been there. I moved a lot of stuff to Tuscaloosa. All those Bama fans. This sounds just like them. Yep. I got a second cousin twice removed who lives in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> he works at a uh, Speedy Mart. He's nice. uh, He ain't too bright. I got to tell you. he's. Uh, but he's worked <laughs> he, there for 20 years, you know. He's, so you're saying he's not too bright. You do realize that this uh, your regular host of the show is going to take this podcast and put it out to the world where everybody can hear it, including him. Or mean, is he not bright enough to figure out how to listen to it? I don't know. I never heard it. So how many people do you think are going to hear this? Oh, I would say at least six. Dang. <laughs> well, forget Which all is, that stuff I said about my, my cousin, because he's a smart boy. He works at Speedy Mart. <laughs> He eats the ice right out of the ice bin. Well, I've seen him do it with his hands. Well, he's he's into um, um, being conservative um, ecologically. He doesn't environmental. I don't even know what is. those words were you just he, said. He 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 doesn't want to waste plastic cups and straws and bowls and what. So he just eats right out of the ice bin. <laughs> so you take this here conjurer, and where do you do it at? Uh, well, this on a street corner. Do you stop on the, I, by the I work post at, office? I work at fairs all over the country. I meet oh, fair fairs. managers, and they go, "Hey, that's cool. We want that at our fair," and they pay me to come do it at their fair and and give their you know guests read their fortunes. So people line up and they go up to the box and they push a button. Yep. And then you say you tell them something. You give them their future. Yep. So. Here's one I like to give. I, I try to read the audience and, and know who's coming up to the box. So, like, if a guy comes up with a, a wife or girlfriend, uh, I like to say something like, Conjurer says, use caution with whom you fall in love. For while love starts out grand, divorce starts out ten grand. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. You, you well, you know... I, my thing, I just want to do these silly one-liners, and it's kind of funny because people come up to the box really thinking I'm going to give, like, a genuine, meaningful bit of advice, and and then I just wisecrack them. I tell kids to clean their rooms up, quit screwing around, and listen to their parents, and the kids look at me like, you're a mean fortune guy. And I'm like, well, how would you feel if you stood in the mm. box all day? Does anybody ever get mad and try to punch you in the box? Yeah. No. Is there no, glass we, on the box? Or? No, it would get too hot. It's open air on the where the windows are. And it's really kind of funny at night, the way the LEDs are set up. They're so bright, people will literally try to reach in because they can't tell. It creates a oh. glare. And they think there's glass, and there's an optical illusion that gets set up. And Do uh, you ever lick anybody's look. hand when they stick their hand in there thinking there's glass, and then you get close to you and you lick them? No, done that? no, Lenny. I don't lick other people's hands, especially when like, freak them out. I don't know. I'll try it though. Next show, do it. First person that puts their hand in the box, I'm gonna grab it. I'm just gonna lick it, and then I'm gonna go get a rabies shot. Take a picture of it and fax it to me. Fa fax it. Why so, don't I just text it to you? There you go. Do you know what that is, Lenny? I got a beeper. I know all about it. You know about a beeper? Yep. So where can they see the people around here, you know, where are you going to be at? Well, if you're in uh, <laughs> if you're in Tonyville and you want to learn more about Conjurer, the best place to find me is on the internet. Do you know what that is? Yep. Lenny? I know all about it. Yeah. I saw uh, that movie with, uh, you know, where they got sucked into the computer and then they got all over the internet. Oh, Jesus. And then... Uh, you know, they talk to people on the internet. 
Yeah, they do. Yeah. You can talk to people on the internet. They sucked his soul in there. So, oh. It was Johnny Johnny Depp, but it was a sucky movie. He got so sucked you mean, into the... You mean not Pirates of the Caribbean? No, another sucky movie. <laughs> the first one was good. I liked the first Pirates of the Caribbean. That was, <laughs> that was believable. It went downhill, the one where he's, he's fighting with a... Orlando Bloom and they're on the big wheel and it's rolling and their sword fighting on it. That's just stupid. That can't happen. Anyway, so where people they can they can you can find me all over the internet. The uh, it, you can find me. It's at Meet Robert Smith is the username. Me M E A T M E E T M E E T. See that, that like I'm supposed to be like a marketing ninja here and I used a word that has two silent e's. M E E T meet. Like he's in introduce meet Robert Smith, or oh. you can or you can just look up uh, Conjure Fortune Machine, uh, and that, that's where I'm at. Come look at videos of the fortune telling; it's cool. Well, you heard it here, folks. This is Lenny Pike uh, talking to Roberto Smith, and uh, <laughs> Lenny, you're the best. Go man. online and, and check him out. And remember, if you need anything moved, you call J and W Moving Dayton, Ohio. Ask for Lenny Pike, and we'll hook you up. We'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye for now.